How's it going guys? David Dumpy here with Healthy Finance, a place where we talk about health, motivation, and of course, financial freedom. Today's episode, we're going to be talking about staking. But before we get to that, I'd like to say thank you guys so much for tuning in, uh, for watching the videos, and we've made 24 subscribers so far. I'm very proud of that. In less than a month, I know people do a lot better in a month. But you know what? I didn't do this to earn subscribers. I did this because I enjoy doing it and I enjoy filming. And the fact that I even had 24, honestly, I thought I'd only have myself, really, <laughs> watching these videos. So it's really cool and I'd really like to thank everyone that's subscribed. And if you are interested and you like these videos, hit the subscribe button down below so you never miss any videos. Click on that notification button and uh, like the video because liking the video helps me grow in the channel though you don't have to do it I'd appreciate it so thank you guys so much again also once we hit 100 subscribers I will be giving away a free copy of Winter's Eve yes signed and with a nice message it's from me to you so once we hit 100 subscribers I was hoping for September 1st if we were to make it if we do, if we don't, that'd be great. It doesn't really matter. At the end of the day, once we hit 100, we will definitely be giving out a free copy. Um, and also, for you guys out there, share this video with other people that you know might be interested. It helps a lot, and you know I appreciate every little bit that uh, I can do. So whatever I can give to you guys, I hope it helps you to grow financially, successfully, and you know, motivates you to push yourself harder because it's it's important in this day and age, especially with the, the pandemic. A lot of people suffered, um, people lost their jobs, um, and we're only just slowly getting back to normal. And even now, the US is in a recession, so you know, it's, it's tough. And the marketing, the housing, inflation is just through the roof. It is a tough time right now. For everyone out there, um, if these these videos at all can help you in any way, shape, or form, um, that's really my goal right now. So, without further ado, uh, let's talk about staking. I totally copied that. I'm not gonna copy that. No, we'll do something else. Like, I don't know. We'll figure it. So, what is staking, anyways? To understand proof of staking, you kind of have to understand what proof of work is. So before we even discuss proof of stake, we should first discuss what proof of work is. Coinbase says, is proof of work is a consensus mechanism used that the network throws a huge amount of processing power at solving problems, like validating transactions between strangers on opposing sides on the planet and making sure nobody is trying to spend the same money twice. Part of the process involves miners, which is what they're called, all over the world competing to be the first to solve a cryptographic puzzle. The winner earns the right to add the latest block to verify transactions on the blockchain and receive some crypto in return. The blockchain is basically a technology designed to figure out transactions through a very complex mathematical equation. Because of mining and because it takes so long to figure out these puzzles and equations, it takes up a lot of processing power. What they're trying to do now is this new thing called proof of stake. It serves a similar function to mining in that it's the process by which a network participant gets selected to add the latest batch of transactions to the blockchain and earn some crypto in exchange. The exact implementations vary from project to project, but in essence, users put their tokens on the line for a chance to add a new block onto the block in exchange for a reward. Their staking tokens act as a guarantee of the legitimacy of any new transactions they add to the blockchain. The network chooses validators, as they usually are known, based on the size of their stake and the length of time they've held it. So the most invested participants are rewarded. If transactions in a block are discovered to be invalid, users can have a certain amount of their stake burned by the network in what is known as a slashing event. So basically, if something uh, doesn't work right, 
Um, usually if there's some funny business trying to go so they can earn stuff, um, what will happen is their prices can be slashed, they can even lose tokens, and this is kind of to help prevent any tomfoolery from going on, if you will. So really, what's going on with Proof of Stake is very similar to what Proof of Work was, but instead of you solving equations, you're putting your money on hold, and that is working to solve the equations now which is not even really equations anymore. It's basically you're putting your money in to help validate the equation. So usually what Coinbase has right now is they are considered a validator themselves because of how much they have staked. Um, currently they have Cosmos, they have Tezos, I think I said that right, Tezos, Tezos, I'm not really sure. Uh, Cardano, Ethereum, and um, they also have Solana right now, which is started. What they're doing right now is that they're using their own currency to now become validators, and now we can put our money into it and it forms a pool. Uh, they get paid so much, we get paid whatever um, small amount we put in. Uh, currently right now, I have Solana on there, and it's gone up 4%, which is fantastic. So if you hold 25 coins, by theory, at the end of the year, you should earn an extra coin because of the 4%. It works a lot like dividends, if you're ever familiar with dividends in stocks. The only difference with that is that every time you own a stock, you get a certain amount of money. But with this, every time you put in your currency, you get a certain amount of the currency back. So the prices can fluctuate a lot more and a lot different than what you would get with dividends. Here's an example. Say you bought uh, XYZ stock for $2. They have a 5% yield on their dividends. So by the end of the year, you should technically earn 10 cents. That's very similar in terms that no matter what different stock you own, you always get the same sort of cash flow back. Um, similarly, if they decide they're going to keep dividends or not, sometimes they want to pay them out, sometimes they don't. The difference between staking and dividends is that instead of holding cash for your stocks, you're actually going to earn rewards of that token that you bought. So just say you bought 25 shares of Solana a year. Technically, you should earn one full share of Solana every single year that you hold 25. And plus that grows. So with Coinbase, all you have to do is keep your money there. It doesn't need to be locked up, which certain places do. And usually with the certain places that are locked up with a much higher yield, um, but then you also lose the chance of being able to sell it if your price goes up higher. For example, Matic right now on Crypto.com, you can get that for 11.5% or higher depending on the level of your cards that you get. Uh, with that, um, though, you have to lock your coins up three months. Matic is skyrocketing in price, which is great, and it brings up more yield. But if the other way happened, like, and we ended up in a bear market, like we are now, and that would plummet back down to 40 cents, I'm losing a lot of money holding on to something that I can't cash out on. So that's kind of like the ups and downs of staking and what's good about it and what's not. Uh, currently right now, Coinbase, I find, it's a lot better at holding your coins than crypto.com because you get more of a yield without the worry of locking up your coins for long term. So like I was saying with Solana, uh, it is a 4% yield right now. Um, so all you have to do is earn put 25 in a year and you can earn an extra Solana coin every single year. If you were just to hold 100 tokens, that's four tokens a year with, with Coinbase. I mean, that's really awesome for just one year of holding your currency without doing anything at all, but just leaving it there. What I'm saying for you guys to do is if you're at all interested in holding on to crypto for the long run, find places where you can stake that currency and, and get into ones that actually can stake like Solana or Cardano and look for different exchanges that actually have really good rates. I love compound interest. I feel like Solana is going to make it big. Uh, they already hit almost 300 Canadian last year in November. 300 bucks a year just to do nothing at all sounds phenomenal to me. So I'm just going to keep dollar cost averaging in there. 
And also with Coinbase, I find that you can actually buy your coin without even looking at it. So right now I have it at 26.49 uh, for Solana. And that's basically, at, they have a certain fluctuation of how much you have to pay. When you go past the 26.49, you have to pay more for your Solana. Um, so I'm basically putting $25 in a week, plus I'm paying the $1.49 uh, service fees that they have. I do find Coinbase has a bit higher service fees, but you know, I think they're gonna do well. I think Coinbase is also going to be a really good stock to start investing in now, especially with the talks of bankruptcy and stuff. There's a lot of FUD going on with Coinbase right now, and I feel like it's just a perfect time to start investing in the Coinbase. They're at 70 bucks US right now. When they were at close to 400, I do believe in November when crypto was going up. So really something to look into if you're interested at all in investing into the company. I don't think they're going anywhere anytime soon. I think there's still a lot of people investing their money. It's really up to you. This is not financial advice. Please, please do your own research. Don't listen to what I say. And if you do listen to what I say, at least go do some research and make sure this is exactly your fit. Don't buy, hold, or sell on anything that I say at all. Just do your own research. And if it sounds like something that you're into, buy it or don't, or keep it, or hold it, whatever you wanna do. But just do your research, okay guys? I really highly recommend you listen and just do your own research. Anyways, guys, this is David Dumpy. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.